I'm sorry, could I please ask members of the public who are leaving the gallery to please leave quietly because we're trying to move on with the next item of business. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And in that regard, we shall move on to the next item of business, uh, which is a member's business debate on motion 4871 in the name of Douglas Lumsden on celebrating success of rugby in Scotland. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. And I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Douglas Lumsden to open the debate. Up to seven minutes, please, Mr Lumsden. Thank you, President Officer. I have never cleared a venue so quickly before. Um, it gives me great pleasure to be able to bring this debate before Parliament this afternoon to celebrate all that is Scottish rugby. And I would like to thank all members who supported my motion and helped me secure this debate today. Now, as a Scottish rugby fan, I acknowledge we have our fair share of highs and lows. Our national team bring us tears of happiness and, yes, frustration. But we live every minute of those matches with the players and we feel every up and we feel every down. Losses don't affect our passion for the game and we always believe that this is the year we can win the Grand Slam. Well, I do anyway. And when it comes to rugby, we can set our political differences aside and admire the skill, commitment and passion from our national teams. And I'm sure the, the Minister would agree on that. Uh, I was delighted to host a reception in Parliament recently to celebrate those successes and I would like to thank all my colleagues, especially the presiding officer, the cabinet secretary for health, and also the sports minister, who were able to make it along that night. I would also like to thank Sharon and Roger Hill, the parents of our former colleague and friend David Hill, who were able to attend while we also remember David on that night. And it was great to have a reception like that after two years of lockdown. It felt like old times. It was just sad that David was not there to enjoy it with us. I also thank Scottish Rugby and the players and coaches who came along from both the men's and women's team uh, on the night. Scottish Rugby has such a rich history with many of the past greats coming swiftly to, to mind. Doddy Weir, who I was thinking about during our members' debate this week on an MND. Jim Jeffries, Finlay Calder. We've all got our favourite players and moments of the past. But it also has such a bright future, and it's that I want to focus on today. President Officer, Scottish Rugby recently launched its new strategy for encouraging more women and girls to enter the sport and find a career in rugby. Post-pandemic, we have seen a rise in women and girls taking part in rugby, which is fantastic to see. But we are ambitious for the future. There are currently over 6,000 women and girls players in, in clubs throughout Scotland, but the aim of the strategy is to increase that substantially by 2025. The strategy will grow participation and visibility of women's rugby nationwide and is based on four P's – participation, pathway, pipeline and performance. Scottish Rugby have committed to more than doubling its spend on women's rugby, investing an additional £2.5 million next year. This is welcome news in developing rugby for all throughout Scotland. Jackie Dunbar raised um, this point at the reception we had a couple of weeks ago. Both our daughters uh, played football, um, but there was no option to play um, rugby, so hopefully this will improve going forwards. And we all know how sport can enhance every aspect of our lives, from physical to mental health. Oh, yeah. And I know that as a parliament, we would welcome initiatives such as these to encourage more women and girls to pick up a ball and play sport at all and every level. Whether that could be a casual game in the park or playground, to get involved in a club, to play for Scotland, participation at any level is key. And anything we can do to encourage that has to be welcomed. And it would be good to hear from the Minister what the Scottish Government can do to help with that level of participation. But we also want to see more parity with the men's game in terms of, of rugby being a career. At present, there are only five women on contracts in Scotland. The aim is to grow that to 30 following the World Cup this year, which, of course, our amazing women's team have qualified for. And I wish the team the very best for the competition in New Zealand. Uh, Scotland has one of the top referees in the world, the groundbreaking Holly Davidson, who takes charge of not just top women's games, but men's test matches also. Holly will also be heading to the World Cup. President officer, I also want to mention today an exciting initiative in my own area of North, uh, North East Scotland that will build that particip participation more and make rugby accessible to more people. Scottish Rugby in May launched a new partnership with Aberdeenshire Council and the University of Highlands and Islands to deliver increased rugby and physical activity 
for secondary school pupils and adults in further and higher education in the north of Scotland. Our Aberdeenshire Council Education Team will see the addition of four rugby development officers and three community coaches who will operate for local rugby clubs. They will deliver a 16-week rugby programme as part of the curriculum for pupils in S1 to S4 across 17 schools. This is the first time a specially designed rugby programme will be delivered as an ongoing part of the curriculum in the local authority. It will provide enhanced opportunities for young people to focus on their health and well-being and enjoy outdoor learning working in partnership with local communities. It is hoped that it will reach 10,000 pupils right across Aberdeenshire. I will take that into consideration. I thought for a minute that you were going to deny me. <laughs> I wonder if uh, my, uh, my esteemed uh, colleague would agree with me that rugby is actually showing the way and that to be able to, to do it, you have to see it. And it's not just about uh, uh, there's the short window of performance, which our ladies are going to New Zealand are showing us that, but also uh, the pathway that you've just indicated there is really important that both of those elements are put together and rugby should be commended for what they're doing. Dr. Slumson. I completely agree with uh, Brian Whistle. It does really show the way. Because as a boy, I was actually quite lucky. I attended my local comprehensive school that rugby was part of the core curriculum. But sadly, this is not the case for, for, for many. It's really quite unusual. Another area that Scottish rugby are working on, on is to widen their engagement with Scotland's ethnic and religious minority communities. They are looking to make rugby more diverse, and I hope the Scottish Government will join with them on making the game more representative of our country as a whole. And with all this good work, I was pleased to see that Scottish Rugby CEO Mark Dodson contract has been extended to 2025. I must also mention the work of Charity School of Hard Knocks. They deliver life-changing programmes across the UK. They change the lives of children and adults using rugby as a medium, working with adults to find and sustain employment and with school children at risk of exclusion to help them re-engage with education now in their 10th year and doing great work in Edinburgh and Glasgow. And last, but certainly not least, I also want to mention today the amazing work that has been done around clan rugby. A couple of months ago, I had the pleasure of attending the match between the, the Holyrood Parliament team and the Edinburgh clan. What a fantastic game it was. Smiling faces, fun and inclusion. It was brilliant to see. Clan rugby brings together both able-bodied players and those with a physical or learning disability to compete in one unified game. Clan rugby demonstrates what a fully inclusive sport rugby can be, all abilities playing together and having an incredible time. President officer, it's been great to speak to the Parliament today in celebration of Scottish rugby and I look forward to hearing the contribution of others today with their stories of how rugby has impacted them and their local areas. Scottish rugby is growing in our nation and we can all be incredibly proud of our teams, players, coaches and amateurs who love the game, love playing the game and just love getting involved. And we must thank all those coaches, volunteers and parents up and down the country who give up their time for the love of the game. Scotland has rugby at its heart and as a parliament, it's our privilege to acknowledge that today. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr Lumsden. I now call Jackie Dunbar to be followed by Finlay Carson. Up to four minutes, please, Ms Dunbar. Thank you, President Officer. As the Deputy Convener of the Cross-Party Group on Rugby, I welcome the opportunity to speak in this debate and congratulate the Convener, Douglas Lumsden, on securing it and for sponsoring the recent parliamentary reception where we met Scotland's manager, Gregor Townsend, and some of the fantastic players of Scotland's women and men's teams. The reception was a great event and provided an invaluable opportunity to hear about the importance of rugby to Scotland, to our economy, our young folk, as well as to the health of Scotland. President Officer, there are few more stirring sights than that of the Scottish team striding out onto the turf in front of almost 70,000 spectators at Murrayfield, ahead of an international game. And with around 250 member clubs in every part of the country, there are ample opportunities to both watch and play the game. In fact, according to the International Rugby Board, around 100,000 Scots regularly take part, and that includes 25,000 women players, a point worth emphasising. Indeed, there is a type of rugby and a level of competition that is right for everyone, whether it's a 15-a-side, casual touch rugby or even walking rugby, and I think that would be my one if I had to choose. Uh, rugby is a fantastic way to keep fit to improve mental well-being and develop transferable skills. 
And on health and wellbeing, I read an interesting study from Edinburgh University which showed that playing rugby at all ages can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes, cancer, stroke, heart disease, depression, as well as improving muscle function, bone health and balance. There really is no reason not to play rugby. So, President Officer, the question is how, how we can support more folk into the sport and ensure it is supported for our amateur and professional players of the future. And in particular, I am interested in how we can support more women and quines into the sport. I welcome that driving up participation levels of women and quines will be an important part of a £100 million push, which doubles Scotland's sport and active living budget by the, by the end of the current Parliament. And I note that preparations are also underway for a Scottish Sport Media Summit aimed at exploring ways to increase visibility and coverage of women's sport across all platforms. This welcome additional investment will benefit the wider supporting system, sporting system and will be delivered in partnership with Sports Scotland to help rebuild capacity within the sector as we continue to recover from the pandemic. It will also rightly focus on breaking down barriers to participation and ensure that more folk, including women and girls, can enjoy active lives while improving physical, mental and social health. On these important points, I would ask the Minister for a commitment that Sports Scotland will work with rugby clubs the length and breadth of the country to ensure they are supported and promoted. And I would also ask the Minister for an update on the Sports Summit and on how it will be taken forward. Presiding officer, the final point I want to make is around touch rugby and how it is being used to support older folk and those with early onset dementia and other health conditions to socialise. Touch is a minimal contact sport played on a 50 by 70 metre sized playing field. It emphasises on running or walking, passing, catching and communication. And it can be played by anyone and the dynamics allow for all ages and abilities. It is a great opportunity for our older folk, and I encourage anybody interested to take a look. Presiding officer, in closing, I again welcome this debate, note the vital importance of rugby, and reiterate my asks of the Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barr. I now call Finlay Carson to be followed by Carol Mochan. Up to four minutes, please, Mr. Carson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. First, can I say that I wasn't intending to speak in the debate today, but uh, my colleague uh, Jamie Halker Johnson unfortunately can't be here, and, and he's the prop for the Scottish Parliament rugby team, and he's in a far better place to, to deliver a speech than I am. But firstly, can I congratulate my colleague and fellow athlete Douglas Lumsden for bringing this debate to the Chamber today. I, I, I want to speak about uh, my uh, local home club, uh, Stuart Rugby Club, based at Greenlaw outside Castle Douglas, who were founded in 1970. And two weeks ago, we celebrated our 50th anniversary. Uh, the, the celebrations delayed by two years because of COVID, but the dinner saw over 450 supporters come together to enjoy the friendships, fellowship and the camaraderie that has been built up over half a century. And, and, and we shouldn't forget that actually this uh, coming month, uh, Stuart Sevens will be marking its uh, 50th anniversary. The club has a remarkable seven youth teams which feed into a first 15 uh, men's team who play in the West Division 1 uh, and the women's uh, 15 known as the Stuart Sirens who play in National 1 who have a fantastic track record having won the National Plate competition on three different occasions. Over the years, Stuart has also had some of its players go on to perform at national level with, level with Stafford McDowell of Glasgow Warriors, Alec Craig uh, playing for Scotland uh, currently, and Joe Ansborough, a multiple Scottish Cup winner. Uh, and we can't forget Alice King, the captain of Watsonians, and of course Susie uh, McKerley Hex, who has, has managed to uh, attain 13 caps for Scotland's uh, women during her career. The club also supports the local community with a full-time development officer and a number of programmes for children and young people in the area. They not only nurture young rugby players for the future, but also take the mental health of everyone involved in the club very seriously, having sadly lost two young players through suicide in the last few years. But they've introduced some really innovative ideas on how to help and support their young and not so young players. And they've worked with the Glasgow Warriors in looking how to best support the mental health uh, of their team and in the wider community. And they were indeed one of the initial groups 
uh, which founded the Stewartry Mental Health Forum, which shares experiences and good practice across uh, a range of uh, rural communities. But rugby really does bring us together, and I'm proud to say that I've played my part in the Parliament rugby team, uh, along with other MSPs and staff. And indeed, I think maybe the Minister, Mary Todd, and I still might be joint honorary presidents of the club. Um, you know, following, uh, we follow the Six Nations team uh, each year, playing our colleagues, uh, parliamentary colleagues from Westminster, uh, the Welsh Assembly, the French Parliament, the Irish Parliament. And I'm actually wearing the, the Irish Parliament club tie today. And we've formed some really strong friendships across the parliamentary and political divide. Um, and, and that was uh, well seen when, uh, you know, sadly, we lost David, a, a great friend to all of us, uh, and the number of Irish players and politicians that came across uh, to support David and his fa fa uh, family. And indeed, uh, you know, David's family recognised the support that Scottish rugby and Irish rugby played uh, in the sad events that took place in, in Dublin. But the, bringing the, the political divide uh, together could, was no better portrayed that uh, when we were in Dublin a few years back and the, and the, the British Embassy and the Ambassador recognised that uh, at that rugby reception, it was the first time that the Embassy had probably hosted every single party from across the island, uh, island of Ireland. So indeed, rugby really does bring us back together. And we've already heard of the, the work that the School of Hard Knocks and Clan Rugby uh, does, and, and the parliamentary team certainly supports that. Uh, presiding officer, my playing days at an international level may have been brought to a premature end by a severe lack of ability, um, but my experiences and the friendship I've built through rugby, and I know that of my friends, colleagues and my family, uh, will never uh, ever uh, regret getting involved in rugby. And I would encourage everyone, if they don't already do so, to, to follow the national team and the Scottish Parliament team, uh, because uh, it, it's one of the best things I've ever done. Presiding officer. Thank you, Mr Carson. And I now call Carol Mochan, and Carol Mochan will be the last speaker before I ask the Minister to respond to the debate. Up to four minutes, please, Ms Mochan. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also thank Douglas Lumsden for bringing another sports debate, an important debate, to the Chamber. Indeed, can I echo the comments of colleagues and, on behalf of Scottish Labour, pay tribute to all of those involved in Scottish rugby for their efforts and successes over the past year particularly given the adverse impact the pandemic had on st team sport here in Scotland. It is great to see rugby in Scotland is looking as strong as ever. I would like to focus the beginning of my contribution on the successes of the Scottish women's rugby team, qualifying for the Women's Rugby World Cup, taking place later this year in New Zealand, as we have heard. This is a significant success for a multitude of reasons, but first and foremost, it is the first time the team have qualified for 12 years, which is a magnificent feat, and I'm sure the whole parliament, I know from the discussion, wishes the team well in their group stage fixtures against a uh, host nation, New Zealand, Australia and Wales. However, it is also has significance for the future of women's rugby and sport more generally. Like other sports, for years, rugby has been a male-dominated scene but by playing in the most prestigious of competitions representing our nation, their elite female athletes will be role models uh, to so many young uh, women and girls who might have an interest in sport. And it's absolutely crucial that we show support through public awareness and other means when the tournament, tournament arrives uh, later in the year. Um, and Brian's points were well made about it being seen and visual for people to be encouraged to take part. And given we are marking the success, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, can I also mention other South of Scotland team, Ayrshire Bulls men rugby side, for the success nationally in the 2021 and indeed before the pandemic for the Scottish Premiership. It is important to have strong voices for rugby in our own areas, and I'm proud in Ayrshire that we do. And I'm sure that it encourages uh, local young people uh, who aspire to be rugby players to take on and be successful. However, Deputy Presiding Officer, we know, like other sports, not everyone enters rugby to become a professional and play at the highest of levels, but also to enjoy the outdoor activity with friends, to learn new skills and to keep fit. Therefore, it is absolutely right that the motion today highlights the value of players, supporters, coaches and volunteers who make community rugby and community sport more widely uh, what it is today. Without the coaches and volunteers, 
many weekly training sessions and matches across the country would not go ahead. Um, and so I think it's really important that we recognise them. And um, also, I uh, have, a, have a football referee in uh, the team that I work with, and he said that I should mention how tough the referee's job is, and so we, <laughs> we support the referees as well. Um, there are so many contributing factors that make community sport work to the benefit of our physical and mental health, um, and it's right that we pay tribute to everybody that puts forward their own time. Having said that, we must not lose sight of the fact that for many uh, sport is inaccessible and rugby, football, tennis clubs may be uh, unaffordable for many. So um, I hope that the Minister will take that point on board and Jackie Dunbar's point was well made. It's important that it's accessible and affordable for all. In concluding, Deputy Presiding Officer, it is right that we have this debate to recognise the progress and success of Scottish rugby at the highest level, but also recognise the importance and influence of rugby at that grassroots level. As the motion states, there are admirable, or, admirable organisations such as the School of Hard Knocks, which uses sport to overcome some of the challenges faced by mo the most vulnerable in our communities. But we do need more from government, more intervention to focus our efforts on making sport very affordable and very accessible. But can I take the opportunity to once again pay tribute to the Scottish rugby teams um, and wish them well for 22-23. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you, Ms Malkin. And I now call on Minister Marie Todd to respond to the debate. Up to seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I want to thank Douglas Lumsden for bringing this motion to the Parliament this afternoon and also to everyone from across the Chamber who contributed. As you will all know, I am a huge rugby fan and indeed a player in our Parliament team. Player President, I think, Mr Carson. Um, and I am absolutely delighted to be closing this member's debate on behalf of the Scottish Government. Members across the Chamber will also know that increasing the participation and the visibility of girls and women in sport is an absolute passion for me and a priority for the Scottish Government. I am therefore thrilled to congratulate the women's team for reaching the Rugby World Cup, which will take place in New Zealand later this year. It is an absolutely fantastic achievement, and I know it is the culmination of a lot of hard work from all of those involved in the team, not least the players themselves. I cannot wait to cheer them on, although the time difference is obviously going to be a challenge. might just stay up all night. Scottish Rugby's announcement that they are committing to a minimum of 30 contracted rugby players following on from the Rugby World Cup is very welcome. That is going to be transformative for those players, as well as hopefully making the path easier for those who are following in their footsteps. And of course, it has been highlighted by many today in the Chamber. It is fantastic to see the four-year strategy for women and girls rugby launched last week, aimed at developing and growing the game at every level. We know that, the significant, that, that there are significant physical, mental, and I must emphasise the social benefits of physical activity. And as Minister, I want everyone to be able to benefit from sport and physical activity in the same way that I have been able to. I think we mentioned a couple of daughters who play rugby. I know that Finn Carson's daughter has played rugby in the Parliament team, as has my daughter who plays rugby, far better than I do as well. This means what we want to do, if we want to get everybody playing and everybody benefiting, we have to remove the barriers, as Carol Mochan said. We have to remove those barriers that still exist to being physically active and increasing the participation and creating a pathway for absolutely every level in sport is key to achieving this. Of course, the men's international team have also had a successful year, impressing in the Six Nations with the highlight being that memorable victory over England in the very first game. Also of note was the men's performance in the Autumn Nations series matches, posting victories over Tonga and Japan and retaining the Hopeton Cup with victory over Australia. The Rugby Sevens calendar is in full swing and I have very fond memories of very sociable summer tournaments uh, that I attended in my younger playing days. I'm sure that both the men's and women's sevens team will be looking forward to the competition at the Birmingham Commonwealth Games. 
I am also very hopeful that I am going to get to watch some of the action when I am there. We have heard about lots of local domestic achievements from across the Chamber today. And congratulations go to any individual or team who have had success at any level. To answer Jackie Dunbar's specific question on Sports Scotland, their investments support a wide range of Scottish rugby activity that encourages and supports people to participate in rugby, including both club and coach development. Since 2014-15, Sports Scotland has invested over £5 million across 36 rugby projects through their sports facility fund. And with partner contributions, the total invested in, in rugby facility infrastructure is over £24.5 million. Of course, they also promote rugby through the Active Schools programme, and there is direct club investment, which offers investment to support club development over a period of two to four years. And over um, 553,000 has been invested by Sports Scotland into 19 rugby clubs since 2013 through that programme. Um, on her second point, um, she did ask about the Women in Sport Media Summit. That is an event I am very keen to see progress. We are in early planning stages at the moment, but many members around the Chamber today have talked about the importance of visibility of women in sport. I am determined that that summit should bring us um, a, a, a focus and um, help to improve the visibility of women in all aspects of sport. I'm really delighted by the rise in popularity of clan rugby and the opportunity for people to play in the same team irrespective of their um, disability. I was really pleased to hear about the success of Edinburgh Rugby's inclusive team who, who competed earlier this month in International Mixed Ability World Championships in Cork and finished a highly credible 10th out of 28 teams. And I know I wasn't playing that day, but I know how much our own Parliament team absolutely loved playing clan rugby a couple of months ago, um, and so much so they hope to make it an annual fixture. As I noted earlier, the key to a healthier nation is breaking down the barriers that exist to being more physically active or engaged in sport. Scottish Rugby's work with Sembo Scotland um, to welcome more people from Scottish minority ethnic communities to the game of rugby is therefore very welcome. Um, I understand that these sessions incorporate contact, non-contact and walking rugby to allow people to enjoy the game in a way that they are comfortable and able. And what we see time and time again is that sport really does change lives. The School of Hard Knocks charity demonstrates that through their use of rugby as a vehicle to tackle unemployment, to tackle crime and to tackle ill health. Working with those who may not usually have had the opportunity to participate, participants gain skills to become physically active and therefore boost their confidence and ultimately their employability. Again, our parliament team and actually many women parliamentarians from this chamber have played against women who have graduated from that programme. We thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm desperately keen as ever to encourage more of my colleagues to join in and I can promise you a completely inspiring time. I'm glad that the motion references volunteers because rugby and in fact all sports couldn't operate without a dedicated army of volunteers. And I want to put on record my sincere thanks to everyone who volunteers, which enables everyone else to enjoy the sport which they love. Now, while it has been a successful year on the pitch, we have seen some tragedy off it. And I want to pay tribute to two particular players. Back in November, we tragically lost Scotland's women interna women's international, Siobhan Cattigan, at the age of just 26 years of age. A terrible loss for someone so young and who was playing absolutely at the top of her game. And then in March, the Scottish Parliament lost one of our own, with the sad passing of David Hill. David was highly regarded throughout the Parliament, and he was described as loving, loving rugby more than politics. And I'm sure that everyone in the chamber and throughout the rugby global family would join me in passing our thoughts and condolences to the families 
of Siobhan and David. To conclude, I am delighted that rugby continues to provide opportunities for people of all ages and backgrounds to participate in a form of rugby which allows them to be physically active and enjoy meeting people who share the love of the same sport at every level, from grassroots to elite. The increase in people playing and watching rugby continues to grow. And as Minister responsible for sport, I'll continue to offer my support to Scottish rugby and wish everyone at all levels good luck for the summer and next season. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. That concludes the debate, and I suspend this meeting until 1.30, uh, just under eight minutes away. Thank you.